received, everybody. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. It's February 14th mm -hmm. when you're watching this. I'm sure we're going to have a very special evening. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. Never been a fan. Oh, I already told my Valentine's story last year. Yeah. The last Valentine's episode where I went to the restaurant alone. And Anyway, don't yeah. do that. Yeah. We well, can look at last year's episode <laughs> yeah. to see the story. But, you know... You should tell the person in your life that you love them every day. Every day. Yes. Yeah. Not just on So Valentine's I'm told. Day. I'm obviously yeah. out of a failed relationship, so I probably shouldn't be any advice at this point. But oh, so well. we've been told. Yeah. Wake up and choose them every day. Yes. There you go. It's like somebody. Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> choose them every day. That's right. Tell yeah. them who we are. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're, if you're just joining us, I'm Kim. This is Jennifer. And we're sisters, and we own Fleece and Harmony Woolen Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, in Canada. And we have a sheep farm, also. And uh, we have a we have a yarn business where we spin uh, local sourced fiber from Prince Edward Island in our yarns, which we're going to really talk about quite a lot today because we've got all kinds of questions from Ask Us Anything that have to do with the sheep fleece. So we'll talk about that. Um, we've got knitting. And we've got, actually, we don't have a lot of knitting in progress. We have fin finished knitting, which is great. I don't have anything. Wait. Did I finish something? No, but I did. No. Two projects. I don't think I did. I don't know what I've been doing yeah. with my time. Yeah, which I find hilarious because, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, so the introduction. So today we have a, as we always. We screwed that up. Right? <laughs> so as, um, as always, we have a farm update and we had quite an adventurous week. And Indeed, yes. we did. So I've, we I've, already, I've already adventures. blocked it out, but yeah, yes. All kinds oh, of I... adventures. <laughs> and uh, we have one work in progress to show. Yep. And we have a shop update, which is a really funny... Well, it's not funny. It's a nice, a nice shop update, but it's very interesting. We'll talk a little bit about it. And I have on the introduction there and other adventures because we had we had an adventure this morning, so we well we tried to make it feel like an adventure, yeah. as one will do when their life is filled with chores. That's it's right. Best to look at them as adventures. That's right. So this is uh, episode number thirty one, and as we said, it's February fourteenth when you're seeing this. If you're watching it the first day that it launched, if you haven't uh, joined us before and this is your first uh, first introduction to us, then welcome to our podcast and for all of those that have been following us from the very beginning welcome back right right so without further ado we'll talk about the farm update so actually today is a beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. winter's day mm -hmm. are you going to show clips from our adventure yeah okay so uh but you'll see that we had snow because Jennifer's yeah. going to show some some clips about that. I expected a lot of snow yesterday and very bad yes. roads. It was yes. supposed to be rain and it came as snow, which is what happens here. You never know which one's going to fall. Last winter, it was always rain. Yeah. So our plow guy came out once. Right. This winter, it's always snow. Right. And so our plow guy is out every five minutes. Yeah. And to be clear, so even when they're calling for rain... It could be snow, but if they're calling for snow, it could also be rain. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, a, it's like it hovers around zero. Yes. Yeah. I quite think often. said that before. So, so people think that it's really cold here, but it's not actually, there's very few days that we get like really seriously cold weather. It's actually more temperate yeah. for a winter, for a winter country. Ocean so. climate. Yeah. So coastal, coastal, the ocean. coastal climate is, uh, the ocean has a moderating effect on the weather. So yeah. less extremes. That's right. Even though it's been sweltering hot in August lately. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that theory is going right. out the window. So, um, so we had quite a, a kind of a serious sort of windstorm. It was pretty serious. Yeah, pretty 90 serious. 90 kilometer an hour gusts or 100 kilometer an hour gusts. Was it? Yeah. Not that much? It said. Your... That's what it said. Oh, okay. So, um, so here's the, the adventurous farm update is that we have three horses and they're, they're outside and my horse is named Miles and his blanket, um, he has a blanket on when it's, uh, when it's kind of going to be wet and windy and whatever. We don't keep them blanketed all the time, but sometimes we put a blanket on and, uh, he had his blanket on. Miles is like Dennis the Menace. Yes. So <laughs> the, he's got one of the toughest rated 
tough rate it for toughness blankets but somehow he always has a rip in his blanket mm -hmm. and um one of the straps broke but i actually think that your horse purdy bites him on the bum and then he runs away and she gets she's actually the one ripping his blanket i think well, I raised He's my girl well. well. <laughs> He's a bit of a no. I have no idea. I've never seen her bite I, him on the bum. Yes, I have. Lots of times. She grabs him at the with a blanket. Good, by the blanket. Good girl, Purdy. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. So, one of the straps on the blanket broke, which is not great. It's just the, like a little strap that goes under the tail, which is not great. And I, I saw it a couple days before we had the windstorm. And I... I um, tried to fix it with another because I didn't have an extra strap and I tried to fix it with another strap which clearly didn't work because it came <laughs> undone and then in a big windstorm I guess what happened was that his blanket blew up over his head I think oh that's what I think happened oh I'm just hearing this for the first time <laughs> so oh it my. wouldn't really oh. it wouldn't really go really over because all of his belly straps and right. everything were still intact right on the blanket yeah. when I found it, after I found the blanket. But, he, but even if they saw it in their peripheral vision, that would be a huge deal for a horse, yes. which they can see all the way back yes. almost to their tail. So anyway, we're kind are... of ahead of ourselves. Right. <laughs> so in the morning, after the storm was done, it was like rain and freezing rain and snow and every, it was the whole mixed bag. Yes. Yeah, so Jennifer, they, you tell the story because you're the one that was yelling from Right. Well, let me preface this house. by saying that I've been doing some renovation. So our house is yes. divided into two apartments. So it's an old Victorian home that we've right. divided down the middle. And that was very easy to do. We just had to shut some doors. But then, of yes. course, we want permanent walls where the doors are because right. that makes it more... Otherwise, it's just an interior door between our two yeah. units, if yeah. you will. Yeah. So I had done a little bit of construction in my bedroom to get rid of one of those doors that was yeah. linking to Kim's hallway. Yeah. So I didn't have to hear them going to the bathroom every morning and brushing their teeth or whatever. Like when it was really like just a regular interior bedroom yeah. door with a gap this big underneath it. Because it's an old house. So I, I thought, well, if, as our grandmother always said, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So I went all out. Right. I got the acoustic insulation and I put up the drywall and I did all of this myself. So what you're not seeing is I'm actually black and blue from here to here right now from lugging full sheets of drywall oh, really? home from Home Depot and oh. look at all the marks on it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been doing construction because up to this point, we could talk through the door. Yeah. Like I could call to Kim from my bed and have her answer. <laughs> so I get up this morning and I've just sort of completed this construction and I'm wow, it's so serene here and mm -hmm. it's very quiet now and I love my room and yeah. everyone's going to sleep better. And I, for some reason, because I never do this, I just decided to look outside and see what kind of mess all the that weather created mm -hmm. first thing in the morning. It was like 7.15 maybe. Yeah. I looked down just in time to see the three horses, Miles, Talon, and Purdy, walk underneath my bedroom window, which is nowhere near the horse paddock where we left them. Right. Not even close. No. So they were up at the house. Yeah. yeah. And they were obviously loose. And mm -hmm. we're not super close to the highway, but in ho loose horse terms, yeah. we are. Yeah. We're like about a 10 second gallop yeah. from a very busy road. Yeah. If going so, full speed. Which yeah. you probably would be if, if you're you blind. Blind. <laughs> was behind you. And my horse gets amped up really easily, so it yeah. would have been a complete mess. Anyway, right. I actually kind of went like, and looked again, and uh, then I started yelling, Kim, Kim, the horses are loose. I don't hear anything. <laughs> and I look and I realize they can't hear me because I've just closed that door yeah. and insulated everything. So then I'm like, oh my God. So I have to run all the way down to the well, the main floor. Yeah. Open the other door down there. Run yeah. all the way back up, and I'm yelling. The horses are out in the and they're out loose, and they're all like, "What? Yeah. What you, what's she yelling about?" I'm like, they just went by the front. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I then had no more time to talk. I run down. I'm trying to get boots and like what I'm in my pajamas. Yeah. So I have to put coveralls or something on. Right. And uh, I get all that you know thirty second fireman kind of dressed up business. I fling open the door and it's just a sheet of ice. Yes. So I'm not running 
anywhere. Right. Like, there's no chance to catch up to them. Like, I would, wouldn't even be, it would be like something from a cartoon. Plus, like, probably not to, not, wouldn't help the matter running after horses like your hair was on fire. No, but yeah. I'm just trying to get I'm out saying, to I'm the yelling, because Ken's levitated off the bed as well by this time on our side, and I'm like, everybody just stay calm. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, um, so Ken actually came out and with his rubber boots on did like this penguin walk, <laughs> like super fast, yeah. but like really careful, yeah, like just like this over to the barn and we got a bucket of grain. And then I came around the front of the house and they weren't there. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, where'd they go? Anyway, he's like, they're just over on the side. They were actually headed back to the paddock because right. they, pro- they probably I thought, thought their breakfast was they, I, I'm sure I heard Talon say, dad's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so they all had to run back to their beds. And uh, anyway, they just went back in pretty yeah. easily. But yeah. it was really awful when I opened the door and realized I can't even, it's not even safe for me to go to them like this is ridiculous how are yeah. we gonna get over there and they're out wandering around anyway there was poop in front of the store and yeah, tracks they, they were up, by the they were up at the store they, they yeah, were everywhere they were everywhere they were out for a while they were yes because when i found miles blanket all still all the buckles and everything <laughs> intact except he was out of it so it oh. must have just gone right over his head yeah that was because yeah. there's really like there's a lot of safety straps on straps it straps it's on important them. to use that equipment yes Properly. So, and it was all still intact, except it wasn't on him anymore. So it had to have gone over his head and then he got his feet out? I don't wow. know. I don't know. Mm. Anyway. That must have been a show and a half. Yes, exactly. So the the electric um, rope gates that we have were actually both busted off. Yeah. So they just ran. He must have barreled right through them. <laughs> and uh, um, Ken went to fix it and it was still on. So we know it was working. No. Oh. Probably mostly the blanket got most of it. <laughs> yeah. And then once it was open, then it was just free range. But luckily, because most of, like, all of our pastures are fenced for the sheep, they came up in front of the store and ran, like, they hit it. They, we have a big pasture in the front of our property and saw the electrical fence there. And I think they thought they couldn't go any further. But they could have gone up the driveway. Yes, they could have gone up the driveway, but yeah. they weren't, weren't. Yeah. Smart enough to figure that anyway, out. Thank goodness. When we all got out, they decided it would be more sensible just to go back to their own yeah. house. So really, they just came right back. Mm-hmm. There was no really... We didn't have to chase after them or anything. Well, we so. wouldn't be able to chase a horse. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was an adventure. So when we say in the introduction, nothing much really happened on the farm this week or the last two weeks... And we're happy about it. This is why. Right. Because it's never If it's good. too exciting. Yeah. It's fun. It's not really... So yeah, then I had so much it. adrenaline. I was exhausted for the rest of that day. Yeah. Like yeah. running downstairs and the yelling and the getting dressed. And yeah. And being terrified you're going to slip and break your skull open. And yeah. Kind of like when we used to work and you realize that you slept in. Like you get out of bed. Like the, it's yeah. like the same. It's only exhausting. it's even more dangerous than and, that. And then... We something we didn't realize until we owned livestock is that you have to have liability insurance for this very reason. Yeah. Like there's loose livestock insurance that you have basically yeah. because you're responsible for every darn thing they do. Yeah. When they get out. Yeah. Well, of course you would be. Who yes. else could be responsible? That's so right. I mean, if they go onto the road and somebody gets killed or whatever, that's yeah. that's on you. Yeah. Um, if they wreck eat someone's cabbages. <laughs> Run you're on the, somebody's potato. You're field. on the hook. Yeah, yeah, wreck someone's potato crop, which three horses could do. Yeah, you know, yeah. quite easily, so, especially if they were on the run. Yeah, if yeah. they were. Anyway, so we've only had loose horses. They've been out a couple times. We had one that went right over to the highway, like to the that Trans- wasn't Canada. Ours, it was a horse. No, I was borrowing it. Yeah, even better. <laughs> And you, were, uh, you let, had it on a trial. A yeah, trial and uh, then he stepped on his own lead rope. Yeah, and stopped and stood. Yeah, and we were able to. Get him, but that was terrifying yeah. too. They're so yeah. fast. I mean, we chased him through, yeah, four fields, hedgerows. Yeah. yeah. So what's ironic about the whole thing, which I was talking to Ken about after after this, or actually, I was talking to Janet, the girl that helps us in the mill, is that they we take them for walks to the back of the property, and we have like a trail through our wood lot, and we take them there all the time. So that would be familiar for them. But do they go down there? No. No. They go in the exact opposite direction, which is really odd. You'd think they would go where it's most familiar. I know, but the dogs are the same. Yeah, like, I always weird. say, like, the dogs want to go out to the highway. It's like, there's 65 acres that way. Yeah. Like, they just want to be with the people. I don't know why they, <laughs> they always... It, everything will head up. Yeah, it's that weird. That way. Yeah, it's weird. 
Anyway, luckily they came up against the, the electrical fence in the front pasture. So I think that that, and then you can see, we could see the footprints, they turned right around. And then it was always, it was an adventure for the rest of the day to look around and see where exactly they went. Yeah, and everywhere. They were everywhere. So, and when I went to pick up the blanket, it did, just didn't come up. It was actually frozen uh, in the freezing rain. Yeah. So they had been out for a while. Little so, buggers. Yeah. I'm surprised. And of course the dogs, because we have three dogs yes. on the property. Yeah. Super helpful. No one said a word. Not a peep. No. No. But have a person that you love show up at the door and knock on it. Then <laughs> all help right yeah. Or have a doorbell ring on the, on the, we don't have a doorbell <laughs> on our house. <laughs> and we have, it. my dog has not heard a doorbell literally in 12 years <laughs> because my other house didn't have a doorbell that worked either when we lived in Montreal and she goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the doorbell was always her favorite thing. Yeah, she's really missed yeah. it on TV. Yeah. Oh, so they're useless. Uh, yeah. People are always like, oh, farm dogs. Pfft, no. Yeah. yeah, not ours. Trust me. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> then, so I guess that's it. But our other adventure today was the... Yeah, yeah. So today we got to do one of our favorite things. Everybody loved the story about Cooper so much. <laughs> well, <laughs> here's another slice of a day of our life. <laughs> so we got to go to the dump. Yeah, which is one of my favorite the things because dump. there is good stuff at the dump. Yeah. So if you haven't gone to a dump in an agricultural area, you really have lived. So it's not like the city dump. No. It's hard to even call it a dump. It's just like a bunch of containers with really cool stuff in it. Yeah. I mean, not all the containers have cool stuff. No, some so <laughs> actually have garbage, but not many. Actually. So we had about six months worth of silage wrap, right. which is the white stuff that makes our feed look like the giant marshmallows yeah. that you, it gets recycled. Yes. And here they have a special program right. to recycle silage wrap. I'm it's, sure in urban areas, <laughs> you have no idea what we're talking right. about, but it's like white plastic. It's white thing. plastic. Yeah. So we gathered all up. You have to fold it and it has to be clean. They're very particular because yeah. it's going into recycling. It's not yeah. waste. So yeah. we've been dutifully folding it all. It's slightly easier than folding a fitted sheet, but not much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's got curved corners where it goes around the edges yeah. of the hay. So we got that all into the truck and we offered to go. Yes. Because I noted that you asked Ken to go the last Tuesday when we yeah. were closed and got a firm That's no not way, on the agenda today. Not happening. I'm yeah. not going to the dump on my day off. However, <laughs> We offered to go because there's a bakery on the way to the dump. Yeah, we had an ulterior motive. Yeah. And also, I just love the dump because not so much in the winter because the good the good pile <laughs> is covered in snow, but there's a pile of stuff there that we've gotten stuff from. Yeah. Like futon frames. and That we used for for uh, lambing. Yeah. Like feed where we feed the lambs. Old and kettles, that. things yeah. like stuff you can make fire pits with. Like yeah. you go in there and just root. Yeah. You root through. And yeah. then if you pick up something heavier than what you dropped off, you don't have to pay. They <laughs> weigh your truck when you go yeah. in. I should explain what happens at the dump. Well, people have probably been to the dump. No, they weigh no, your truck, no. you drop your stuff off, then they weigh it after, and that's how they calculate. But half the time, we leave heavier than we came in yeah. <laughs> because we're like, this we is trade, so good. We trade in our, yeah. our stuff for other stuff. Yeah, for <laughs> other stuff that we repurpose. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've gotten other things too, like old barbecues and all kinds yeah. of fun things you can do stuff yeah. with. However, but, today it was all covered in snow, so right. it wasn't much fun. Right. So that was disappointing. And they keep they they're really they're really uh, keep like very strict about the way stuff is sorted there yeah. at this at this. Uh, I guess they, it's called Waste Watch. Is that what yes, it's called? Waste Watch. Yeah. Waste Watch. So they're really careful about the the sorting. So. You don't want to run yeah, up Yeah, it's very the... clean and tidy and not smelly. Not at no. all like a city dump. No. The city dump, you practically have to wear a mask. Yeah. I've gone to the dump in Halifax and I've gone oh, to the really? dump in Toronto. Oh, okay. And I wouldn't recommend doing either of those no. things. No. <laughs> this is not the <laughs> same thing. Unless you like rats a lot. This is not the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's just little shipping containers and everything's sorted. And it's just the one it, pile where the stuff that you we don't want to. You don't want to attempt to put the wrong thing in the wrong container. No. No, they're very strict. Thankfully, because then you go to the container where you think you might want to find something. <laughs> yeah. If they think you're naughty, you get an escort. Yeah. I've had them follow me around before. Yeah. <laughs> if they think you look like trouble, she doesn't know where stuff goes. Go. <laughs> follow her. You need to Can watch. I help you with that? <laughs> we thought, at first, we thought they were just being helpful. I think they were making sitting. sure that we sorted things. Anyway, right. so it's very, it's very pleasant. Yeah. And there's good treasures there. Yeah. Old cast iron 
frying pan. Like, yeah. you can find good stuff that yeah. you can throw away. Yeah. So I probably sound like weirdos now. But anyway, <laughs> so there's a restaurant on the way to the dump. It's very close to it. Right. That is called the Home Plate. And by very close, we mean like less than a mile or yeah. a kilometer yes. away. Not like walking distance. Yeah, not walking distance. It's not next to the dump. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. It's at the end of the road where you yeah. turn off. Yeah. So, and it's a place called Murray River. This is yeah. where all this is happening. So, yeah. um, and there's Murray River and there's Murray Harbor. And those are two lovely little towns with shops and things. So if you come to the island, it's not a bad place to hang out. Murray River and Murray Harbor. Right. They call it's like the two, the Murrays. The two Murrays. The yeah. Two Murrays. The Murrays. Okay. Yeah. The Murrays. Don't they, get them mixed up though. If you're oh, talking. it's yeah. very important which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say they're from the river when they're from the harbor. Yeah. Or vice versa. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's the Murray's. So we went and the whole plate is one of the few businesses probably in this county that is also open year round. She's very dedicated. So big props always from us for other business owners who stay open year round. Right. Because we personally do not love seeing everybody else's Mexican vacation photos. Yeah. It's like, you don't even really live on the island. Like if you haven't been here in January, you're not like, you're missing all the, you're not legit. You have no cred whatsoever, right? Like, right. think about that. They're not here. Yeah. They're not here right now. Yeah, that's they're right. gone. We're yeah. here. Yeah, and the home plate is here. Yes. So we stopped in to see Carol in there, and she makes these tarts called Bakewell tarts. Right. Which you have, if you have any British ancestry whatsoever, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, um, it's a like a pastry crust with some jam and frangipan, yeah. and then like a like a like the kind of cinnamon bun frosting on top and a maraschino cherry. Yes. And they're delightful. Yes. So So I was craving one of those. Does it have marzipan in it? It's not the same as marzipan. They're both just an almond filling type thing. Okay. They both have almonds. It does have an almond taste. Yes. Yes. It's still a frangipan is an almond based filling. Okay. So the truth is, as you probably gleaned by now, I actually just had a craving for a baked well tart. So that's why we had to go to the dump today. But there also was a lot of silage wrap to take, and the yeah. brine looks much better with it gone. Yeah. So we dropped into sea, but the bad thing is she didn't have any today. No. So I had to settle for a banoffee tart. Yes. Which was amazing. And I had to settle for a toffee-covered chocolate tart. Horrible. Oh, there no, was only sorry. one of those it was, I would have It was uh, chocolate-covered toffee. Yeah. Yeah. In a tart. That's yeah. a lot of toffee. It was delicious. Oh, so good. Yeah, really good. So if you're on the island and you haven't checked out the home plate, you must. They have excellent fish and chips. Yeah, they're ho- it's like home cooking. She's from, yeah. from, I'm not sure where she's from in the UK, but she's from the UK. Definitely. They, they yeah. immigrated some here. some kind of accent. Yes, we're not sure what what <laughs> what dialect it is. Right. We should have asked her actually. Right. If we, we were going to talk about it. it. Yeah, yeah, we but forgot. Anyway. But we forgot. Anyway, it's really like English uh, English style breakfast. Cooking. English breakfast. Yes, English yeah. breakfast. Which if like you've never had an English breakfast, English breakfast. Yeah, if yeah. you haven't had an English breakfast, you know, prepare yourself before you right. go. It, there's a lot. There's yeah, a lot of, it. A lot of meat. <laughs> And um, she just told us about a new thing they're doing uh, this Saturday night, yeah. which would be tomorrow. If you're on the island, they're yeah. having like a hoedown night. So yeah. for everybody who doesn't live here, there's a Saturday night radio program on the country station called the hoedown. Yeah. And before you get into this story, we want to reassure you that we are going to talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the hoedown is on, right. it's 95.1 every Saturday. I believe it's been running since the 60s. And you can stream it. You so wherever you're listening to us yeah. from uh, in the world, you can you can find out what we're actually so talking every, about. So every every episode of the Hoedown starts with Grandpa Jones, right? Yeah, it's like old school country. Yeah, really old school. George Jones, Merle yeah. Haggard, yeah. Grandpa Jones. Yeah, the whole nine yards. Right, and it's three hours long. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a big island tradition. You can call in with requests from anywhere. Yeah. Like even if you're just streaming it, they'll take requests from all over the world. Yeah. And it's really quite the show. It so really she's something. gonna have that on and serve like hoedown, like some uh, southern food. So ribs and chicken wings and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So that's on Saturday. She's doing that every Saturday. Or is it I just don't know. this Saturday? I'm anyway, sure. I'm half tempted to go. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds amazing, yeah. and we do love the hoedown. It is a big thing on Saturday nights. People listen yeah. to the hoedown. It's the hoedown. Yeah, it's the hoedown night. Yeah, they so. once changed hosts, and whoo, yes, that was, was a deal. A, yeah, 
Yeah. It was all over the news. Yeah. Nobody could take it. No. There's no change. No messing with the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I believe that's all calmed down now. But yeah. It was a big yeah. deal when somebody messed with the hoedown. Right. So uh, when you're visiting, because I know a lot of our viewers are planning to come here at some point or other, mm-hmm. six o'clock Saturday night, the hoedown. Is it six? Yeah. Okay. Six to nine. Six to nine. Give it a try. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, it's really a throwback. Yes. But it's very, very, it's very fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. very fun. It's good. Okay. So, so, that's so it. that was that going to the dump adventure. Yeah. So that's the that's on our agenda for uh, as other adventures. So that was our other oh, okay. adventure. And check out the home plate. Yes. And listen to the hoe down when you come. Right. And like our video and subscribe to our channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you like our video. If you like it. If you don't, the... don't feel the need to do anything. That's no. what your back button is for in your browser. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about knitting. Yes. So I'm, I'm secretly just so smug today because I said to Jennifer this morning in the barn when we were doing chores that if people have only started watching our podcast since the second last podcast that we did, they're going to think that I am such a prolific knitter that they just don't understand <laughs> how I can keep up with it with all the <laughs> other things that we do because it was Joe Bat's arm yet mm-hmm. last time mm-hmm. and I have two FOs this mm-hmm. time. Joe Bat's arm, which you'll recall from last Valentine's Day. Yes, which so somebody, somebody <laughs> said to me, I think you've been knitting that for as long as I've known you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so now I have my Emma version A, mm-hmm. which is the, this one that I'm wearing, which I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about and um, I'll talk a little bit about it in some detail. So I have finished this and I'm wearing it and next to me is the lovely mm-hmm. Birds of a Feather. That thing's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It's very big, but Jessica here, our <laughs> faithful mannequin, does not have the shoulders that I do or right. the bust line. So it, it looks, Jennifer says, were, were you intending that to look like a toga? Uh, <laughs> it's no. a full toga for Jessica. Yeah. It's, and yeah. somebody, I, I made a comment about, because we had it stretched out in front of us in the last episode, that it's a schlanket. A schlanket. <laughs> it's a shawl blanket? <laughs> yeah. But I love it. It's beautiful. So we're going to talk about that first, I think. Okay. So um, I'm not going to go into all the detail of the yarn and everything, but uh, it's finished. There's no, um, just as a quick recap, there was like a, it was checkmark shaped because I didn't have enough yarn to finish it. Jennifer dyed me more yarn. I finished it. So it's actually to the pattern now, except for one detail, which is the um, edging here. So in the pattern, it would just be a flat edge, but I absolutely love this edging, which um, Sylvia McFadden uses on some of her shawls. So I kind of stole the technique from the water shawl. Waiting for Rain is the one that it was published with, I think. Oh, it wasn't on the... I think it was in the water as well. She may have edged it as well. Okay. Yeah. So it's an edging that she... Well, you you might be right. So sorry. You'll need to... Uh, waiting for rain we for sure. We just put it on everything now. Yes. Yeah, so we just put it on everything. everything so it's, yeah. <laughs> I just love it. And it's this little Pico lace edge. And um, it just drapes across the front of the shawl when you wear mm-hmm. it beautifully. That's nice. Um, I just have it... Uh, because it's... Um, it's a little bit too big for this mannequin. I have it held together with a, a shawl pin from Jewel. So we'll put all the details down in the, in the notes. It's called the circle, I think. Yeah, yeah. modern circle. But it and might I be, just, it might the be circle, just the circle. Circle, the okay. Yeah, or on a circle. Anyway, it's very simple. It's and it's a nice light yeah. uh, shawl pin. So for this, yeah, so again, the Rowan Kid Silk Haze in cream with the, with the yarn. We have two yarns in here now. We have a cashmere blend that we have a special. We do it when we have local cashmere and uh, a wool as well. So uh, I, it's really, really nice. Yeah. I'm really happy so with that they, project. So if you want to get the pattern for the edging, I'm pretty sure it's sold with Waiting for Rain. Yeah. Yeah. Sylvia McFadden, soft sweater. Yeah. And uh, she's a Canadian designer out of Vancouver, and we love her stuff. Yeah. She's so good. She's, she's also a photographer, and her, her Instagram and everything is just beautiful. Yes. And her shawls are really generous mm-hmm. when you make them as well. So. Yeah. And, but the shawl that this is on right. is Birds of a Feather by Andrea Maverick, yeah. which is uh, in Lina issue two. Yes. Was where it was first published, yeah. but I think you can get you can get it separately. So now, now it's a Maori McFadden mashup. Yes. 
Hopefully they don't mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's your shawl. Put yeah, whatever it you want on it. That's right. Yeah. So, and it's not been blocked. So in the instructions, because we're big blockers, we're going to talk about blocking. But um, it's not been blocked because it's, it requires just a light block. But to be honest, um, it'll it would straighten out a little bit like a, the stitches. But I it's it's really massive yeah. yeah so I would steam steam it um, we're gonna show you a little video about blocking which is wet blocking but if I was steam blocking this I would lay it out and I would just use a uh, an iron that and let the steam flow over it so mm -hmm. you don't actually touch it with the with the iron when you're when you're steam blocking so so that's beautiful you'll yes. have to wear that somehow so yeah I'll wear today. it on the next okay. episode so then the next finished object is my Emma sweater and <laughs> you're just taking over the show look at all these echoes <laughs> yeah nice so this is really quick to knit and it's knit and Aaron on eight millimeter needles and uh the the method is it follows the cocoa knits sweater method which is really amazing because you have these little worksheets and you figure out how the yoke goes and you, you do that. So there's also, um, we talked about this before, but there's also a section in the book that talks about the proper sweater shapes for your, whatever your body type is. So I followed that for this, for this sweater. It looks amazing. So it's a V-neck and we'll show a picture, but it fits perfectly through the body and everything. The sleeves are long because I knit them longer. And it looks nice. It looks really cozy. Yeah. I like them. So it's actually, I added two inches to the, the length of the sleeve. So it would have fit perfectly at the wrist, but I did this on purpose because I, I like that. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing with my Joe Bat's arm. So you see the... And it's elongating go. too. Yeah. It's yeah. elongating. Part of the, the sweater actually shown in the book is a little bit sort of a crop. I don't do crop sweaters, <laughs> so um, part of the trick of the visual that they tell, tell you all about in the book is that you bring your the sleeves to the part where you want the eye to follow, which is below my center. It actually part, looks so. amazing. Like, yes. the fit is definitely your yes. fit. Like, it's your yes. style. Yeah, It looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. So... Now I'm going to give you all of the things because I'm, I've talked before that I don't do a lot of top down sweaters and I have not had a lot of success with top down sweaters. So for me, even though I would consider myself a fairly experienced knitter at this point, I had to learn. It's like it's every day is a school day. <laughs> yeah, I learned things by doing this, uh, this method. So we're going to talk about a couple of the things that we, that I learned. So, um, First of all, the fabric, we, we talk about alternating skeins all the time, and we showed this up close in a previous episode, is that you can really see we're alternating the skeins. We, we don't often knit with the quality of yarn that we sell. We knit with the stuff that we don't, <laughs> we don't sell because we don't waste anything. So this is, was actually a batch of um, yarn, which we would consider seconds that we hold back, and we, we knit our projects with it. And um, it was all dyed in the same mm -hmm. dye lot, but it was the yarn is a little bit uneven, so it and takes all up. different sheep. Like it would be from whatever batch. Like yeah. I just gather up a bunch of white stuff that we didn't sell Lengths. for whatever yeah. reason, and then yeah. dump it in the dye vat. Yeah. So, so it's uh, it has quite a lot of uh, variegation in the in the tone, even though it was all dyed together. So it was really important to um, alternate my skeins when I'm knitting and there's a uh, really good video tutorial that we did on helical knitting, which is the technique that you use to do that. And uh, so you can really see that it's, uh, it's made almost like a stripe effect, yeah. which I like. I really like it actually. Hmm. So, uh, so there's that, that's the first thing to talk about. The eight millimeter needles with our Aran yarn gives a fairly loose fabric. That's my favorite. Is it? Yeah. So the evening walk shawl was an experiment I did to find out what needle size I liked best in our with our Aran weight, and so I purposely knit that loose, and I I just said I'm just gonna do a triangle shawl because I want to see what fabric I like, and it's it's eight millimeter, and then this was done in eight millimeter, yeah. and I still I agree I love it. It's, yeah. It's the perfect way to use this yarn, I think. Yeah. It can get very dense if you go a lot smaller. Right. It's pretty cushy. Yeah. So 
it, and so the having um, the the fabric that with a little bit of space in it mm -hmm. allows the yarn to really yeah, perform it's like it's beautiful. Yeah. It is so cozy. And the style of this is supposed to be like a comfortable kind of sweatshirty style sweater, even though it's more, much more tailored, obviously, than a sweatshirt, but just that something really com comfortable and it fits the bill mm -hmm. with that. So, and the color is vineyard, our vineyard yes. color, which is really nice. Yes. Yeah. So everything I'm going to say from now on has nothing to do with the pattern itself. It's all of my, my learnings because of my knitting technique. So the pattern is very clear. There's great um, information about every step of the pattern in the book. And there's also really good video tutorials online as well that you can follow. So all of the, the mistakes that I'm gonna tell you about have nothing to do with the, with the, the Cobra Knits method. It's my knitting. S to the point where I think I'm actually gonna knit another one. I kind of want to knit one because it's yeah. wonderful. It's really a wonderful garment and yeah. super fast. Yeah, so nothing that I'm going to say is a reflection of the pattern. It's about my own knitting. And if you think of me as a beginner on this t style of thing, then that's what I am, right. really. So the the method is really easy to follow, but you, um, you construct a yoke, like a, a neck at the back and the front of the shoulders, and it gives this kind of um, set-in sleeve look without doing a set-in sleeve. So um, my shoulder width from my neck to the tip of my shoulder, the top of my shoulder, I think is a little bit bigger than the size of the sweater that I actually yeah, because if I, so I'll just show with my hands. So this yeah. is your, the spine at the top of the shoulder. Right. Is where my fingers are. Yeah. And I can see just from looking at this, it should have been more like that. Yes. So I think because your shoulders are quite rounded. Yeah. Like we're not point, I'm point, I'm pointy. <laughs> but I think Ken and I both tried to help her measure, but I think yeah. it's a little bit off. You're probably missing almost like an inch. Yeah to really be at the top of your shoulder where then your sleeve would come down. Yeah. But you just have a more rounded yeah. shape around here. So yeah, it makes it's it difficult. Like this. Yeah. So it's like the difference from here with your hand from here to here. Yeah. And that would have made it perfect. So the next size up is actually a half full half inch, which would actually would have been, been fine, better yeah. the next size up. But the rest of the, all the measurements are not that. Right. So it's because of my anatomy. It's big shoulders. <laughs> it's my yeah. anatomy. So I think it would be fairly easy to adjust, but um, I would not have, have attempted it in the first, the first round because I was just trying to understand how, how the method worked. And a so lot of you picked the size that was sort of closest average on all the measurements, yes. not just the one that fit the shoulders. Yes. Best. Right. And okay. there is the neck on the sweater is designed to be fairly wide. So I think wider than what I, I want it. So I think that if it was, the neck was as wide as how it should be for every, and everything else remaining equal, that might have been okay. But because I wanted the neck a little bit closer, it also had affected that, mm -hmm. you know, in a way. So I think it's fairly easy to follow how I would make the adjustment to that. But until, I don't want to start guessing because until I re-knit it, I, I can't really give any definitive because obviously you have a whole cascade of things that would happen. You do, you would, I would do more in, increases there to make this longer mm -hmm. and then I'd have to take them out again and mm -hmm. whatever. So I'm not going to get into, I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. how, but I, I think it's fairly straightforward if I wanted to do something different. Yeah. You can see the shoulders just not fitting quite yeah. perfectly. It would be more like this would be up here and everything would yeah. just change as a result. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh my gosh, it just feels so nice. Yeah, I know. It's really, it's a really, really nice fabric. Yeah. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, and I talked about this in a previous episode as well, and we have a knit along group on a Ravelry with this. So um, there's people in there that are conversing about the, everybody's helping each other. It's really, mm. good. it's really good. So the other thing is, is that when totally my fault. I didn't really read through the whole pattern and understand that you don't do, I thought I was going to pick up around the neck and do like a neck, a neck band for a V neck. I've never knit a V neck sweater before. So, um, I just kind of made that assumption, but in fact you don't, you just like, this is your salvage edge and then you join in the middle 
And um, knowing that that's how it was going to work, I would be more careful about the way my um, increases and everything happened because I do have some like bigger stitches here and I didn't really measure the where the neck the v-neck was so the reason why a v-neck is the perfect sweater shape for me is because I have hardly any neck so <laughs> so my it's neck is short gating. yes it's elongating and my neck is short and I think that and you know that so this distance is actually fairly short as well for me from the back like to to here so this v-neck was really deep really low yes it was really low so um, uh, I actually did a little tricky thing here and I did some um, closed it up a bit closed it up a bit and uh, to make it to make it look a little bit more modest it was something else yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> it's was well below that yeah. <laughs> yeah so if the shape is a little bit different then that that's why I just yeah. did that little that little but it looks trick. it's yeah. a wonderful shape on you yeah and then around. the waist shaping is beautiful it's perfect mm -hmm. the length is perfect i used another sweater that i like wearing that was kind of modeled after that mm -hmm. so it if that worked that's a mm -hmm. suggestion that they make in the book as well and that was perfect mm -hmm. so now we should just go to the video of you blocking this yeah so blocking um with our yarn is really mm -hmm. it we we're big fans of blocking we love the blocking. Yes. Blocking is everything. It makes a big difference yeah. on, your, on your knitting. And so. we're very particular blockers. Yes. With rulers and measurements and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Lots of pins and um, well, we use the knit blockers. Yeah. But, um, well, so we did a tutorial because I think people have asked for it. Yeah. Uh, and they've also asked for a uh, Nostapin, which we'll do for next right. episode, the Nostapin winding Ball tutorial. Winding. Yeah. But for now, let's go and watch uh, Kim's blocking process with this sweater, and then we'll come back after. Okay. Okay, so here we are. This is the first step of blocking. And this is my Emma sweater that I did for the Coco Knits um, Knit Along. And so yes, it's finished, another finished project. And I just wanna show what we mean by soaking. So we're talking about seriously soaking. So I have my, uh, my sweater in this, uh, this little pot and there's just a dollop of eucalyn um, rapture in there so that's a conditioner uh, soak for wool and i've put my sweater in it absorbed a little bunch of water and then i topped up more water to make sure that it's totally soaking so it's cold so it's no warm at all it was just straight out of the the tap okay so and i want to just take a minute to talk about what we mean by cold water we actually mean cold and I'm not saying tepid or lukewarm because most people's um, impression of lukewarm when you put your hand in it is really too warm for soaking uh, soaking your woolens so this is cold straight out of the tap uh, no warm at all and you don't have to have your hands in it a lot so you know it's not gonna it's gonna not be bothersome to your hands and um, we really just want to make sure that it, it's cold, that uh, you don't have any kind of um, effect on the dye or whatever. So it's just, uh, just a good cold soak. We're going to leave it in here for half an hour at the minimum. But because this is an air and weight sweater, I'm going to actually leave it in for an hour or so and come back and check it. You really want to make sure that all of those fibers are, are absorbing. Uh, as much water as possible so that it's soaked through and through. Okay, here we are. So um, I'm all ready to start blocking. So what's happened since uh, the first clip was that we've emptied the water out of the pot and the sweater and I put the sweater in a lingerie bag and because I have a front load washer with a hand wash cycle, I put it in the lingerie bag and then I spun my sweater in the washer on the gentle, gentle hand wash cycle. If you do not have a washing machine which can um, do that gently, then you should actually squeeze as much water as you can out of your sweater or your garment or whatever it is that you're blocking and then lay it flat on a big thirsty towel, roll it up like a jelly roll and then step on it to get as much of the water out as you can. So the objective here is to get it 
as dry as possible but still wet for because you want it to dry in the shape that you're uh, that you're aiming for so I've got my cocoa knits uh, blocking cloth underneath my blocking pads or on top of my blocking pads. So each of the squares are one inch. I also have a notepad with my schematics that I want to hit. So the measurements that I want to hit and I'm ready to start blocking. I will make one note. You might see that there's one or two um, ends that have not been woven in or look like they've not been woven in. They've actually been woven in. They just haven't been trimmed yet. So I usually weave in my ends and then do the blocking and trim the ends afterwards um, just to make sure if there's any kind of um, um, not shrinkage but tightening up of the fabric and everything that I make sure that I have a, a good secure end uh, on my sewing. So I'm going to start by putting uh, preliminary T-pins in where, I, where I'm looking at the measurements like around the neck and everything and uh, I'll start that and you'll see some video, we won't talk and we'll come back and talk after. Okay, so now that the anchor pins are in, so I have my sweater kind of secure on the pad, I'm going to start the blocking of the whole sweater, doing the same thing, using my schematic measurements, counting out the squares and doing the blocking. I'm going, instead of doing the whole thing with T-pins, I'm actually gonna use these Knitter's Pride knit blockers, which are fantastic. So you have small and large size blockers and you'll see how those go into the sweater and uh, it saves you a ton of time doing the blocking. Um, and we're not sponsored by Knitter's Pride or anything. These are just the tools that we like to use. So um, we'll give them a shout out. <laughs>
so uh, you saw how that went. You noticed that I was counting blocks because I know my measurements, referring to my paper about what uh, measurements that I was gonna use. Um, I didn't worry about the waste because uh, there's a little bit of negative ease there, so I'm okay with that. I paid particular con attention to the length and that was because um, I know that our air and weight yarn, when you block it, it tends to um, go, uh, go shorter and wider. So I made sure that the width and the sleeves and everything was okay. And, but the length is the important part for me because I don't want it to, I want to make sure that it's as long as uh, I had wanted it, <laughs> that I knit it. So I did that. Also, you'll notice that I paid some attention to the neck. Um, if you remember in previous in episodes of our podcast, I had talked about that the neck was a little bit wide. So I just made sure that I blocked that um, close together so it'll, it'll stay in that, uh, in that position. So that's it. Now you just have to wait for it to dry. It's air and wait. So hopefully by tomorrow morning, it'll be dry. All right, so it's the next day and my sweater is fully dry. So I'm gonna take off the pins and this is why we like using these knit blockers because if you're taking out 50 key pins this is a lot easier Once it relaxes, I'm sure you'll be able to see the difference. I don't know if we should have a before and after, if it would be obvious or not on the... <laughs> so, but now your sweater is fully blocked. And you may recall from the earlier part of the video, because this is just a stock in that sw uh, sweater with a bind off, it was rolling, but it uh, it's no longer rolling. It's perfectly flat. And around the neck is perfectly flat. So um, the stitches are all nice and even. The texture of the yarn is beautiful because it blooms. And that's it. Now I'm going to go try it on. All right, so, and I mean, it looks perfect. Yeah. Everything's very even. Yes. Yeah, all the stitches are yeah. orderly and behaving nicely. Yeah. Playing well with others. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but the good, the proper tools do make a big difference, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we're big fans of the proper tools. Yeah. 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 All right, so that's it. Perfect. Wow. <clears throat> that's a lot, a lot of talk talking to you because, it, yeah. Yeah, in the finished object <laughs> section. All right. <laughs> Uh, so we, you don't have any whips. No, but I have my next project picked out, which I'll talk okay. about after you do your Okay, whip. so I'll do my whip. So I have two whips, but I only brought one because the other one I haven't worked on. So I wasn't meaning to still take a break, um, for the last two weeks again, and I didn't completely take a break, but I didn't probably knit as much as I typically do. Yeah. Because you were doing know. your construction. Yes, that's right. I was like, I don't know what I did with my time. I built a wall inside our home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. Something has to give, right? Yeah. Like, we don't have extra time. No. So that is what I was doing. And I still yeah. have to tape and mud the drywall. Yeah. Anyway, so this is uh, this is the, my test knit, uh, my latest test knit with Jennifer Beal, which mm -hmm. is called Flat Rock. And uh, I did show pictures of it in anticipation of starting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I even had this with me last week or last time. I don't remember. I don't think you had much but of it. But I'm, this is amazing. The, this, I wish you guys could feel this because this is the most amazing fabric that I've ever yeah, felt. Yeah, because it's a form of brioche stitch. So it's a double stitch knit in our lace. Is it, and is it a tuck stitch? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, it's actually kind of like a triple aerated it's, it reminds me a little bit of a shaker knit, which is a little bit similar to brioche too. So it just makes it a really thick sandwich of lace amazingness. Yeah. Is basically lace yarn. Lace yarn. Yeah. yeah. Our lace weight yarn album. Yeah. yeah. And then there, she's sort of done something fun with the colors are running through this brioche. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Uh, in stripes. And it just, it's almost like stained glass. Yes. 
Yeah, now that said, it took me a while to figure out what the heck I was doing. That's a lot of ends you got there. Yeah, so you're <laughs> switching colors quite often. I'm not fit fussed about this at all. Yeah. Um, because I'm sure we're going to pick up and add stuff and it'll all go to the inside and felt. Um, and mohair is a bit slippery, but it's also uh -huh. um, jams up pretty quickly. If you've ever tried to rip it out, you yeah. know that that's not much of a fear, yeah. having anything slip out. Yeah. Um, so basically, I'm working on the front of the sweater. I need 14 inches of this, mm -hmm. and then I think I go and do something similar for the 14 back. 14 inches of rope? Long. Long? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a ways yeah. to go. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a while to understand the stitch. Okay. It's really different. Uh, and you're switching colors and... and but now you said you're... you're but I finally perfect. figured it out. Yeah. Because yeah, it's a little bit like a rib, so now I can read it. Yeah. I was really having to look at the pattern a okay. lot until I figured out what the heck was going on. Um, so, and there's two of us in our knit night group testing this. And I even wrote to uh, the other one, Karen, and I was like, is this... Mm -hmm. Am I reading this correctly? Like, yeah. what am I doing? But now I understand it. So now it'll go much faster. I, and I have to... Two and a half millimeter, though. Right. So, and this was two millimeter. Right. So, just to give you an idea, this is not the, a small the, amount of knitting. The reading. bottom edge was two millimeter. Yeah. 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 So, I've worked on it quite a bit, and now it'll just start to go much faster. It's so absolutely gorgeous. Though. I love it. I know yeah. I say this every time. I really think this is going to be one of the most favorite things I've ever made. And... I think the back, the bra, the the yeah, non wrong side, side is, is almost as good. Yeah, as the, it's neat. Yeah, the way the colors are have been managed it's by amazing. Jennifer, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it uses every single color of Elden lace that we make. Mm -hmm. um, but the good news is, once this pattern is released, we will be offering a kit for the colors. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to offer a kit for the the main color because that would vary so much between um, people and sizes and things. Yeah. But we are going to offer kits. Um, of a certain size just to get all the other eight colors that you mm -hmm. need to go with your main color so to make this sweater buy. because otherwise yeah. it would be like hundreds and hundreds of dollars yeah. we're not going to do that to you and we yeah. do want people to actually knit it so yeah. that's coming up um when this is released later on i have it's it's really uh it affects the color of the slate eh? with all those colors running mm -hmm. through it it makes it it really softens the yeah, I don't know. It's just beautiful it's, all it around. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Really so nice. I'm really excited to get it done, but I have a long way to go on that. So I'll help you because my next whip, I think, will be fairly quick too. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to just... See uh, so I've already picked up my next project because I'm a little bit adrift, I have to say, not having a project. So I'm going to do Hinterland by Jen Steingast. And I'm super excited. This is not a very, my printer was on draft, so okay. it's, not a very, it's not a very good picture of it, but go check it out. And um, I am going to get the colors that I chose to do it, so I forgot to bring them over. Oh, good job. So we're going <laughs> to just go, go get, get those. those. All right, you're back. I'm back. So this is what I'm doing. I'm so excited about it. It's something completely different for me because I would not n normally knit with the green, but I wanted to do something different. I'm just trying to to test my boundaries. Branch out. Okay. Branch out a little Get bit. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So I think it's going to be in the worst at weight yarn. I'm just going to, I have to do my gauge swatch. This is thistle. And thistle is a variegated uh, color that contains pine forest. So I'm going to do these two colors together. So the main body of the sputter will be pine forest and all of the color work will be in um, thistle in the variegated. And just, I just, the sleeve bottoms are the, yeah, you'll go on Ravelry and check it out if you want to see it closer up because this is really a terrible printing job. But again, it's long, long sleeves. I'm really into that right now. Hmm. And uh, the the actual design is going to be um, really fun with hmm. this. So you might be done that in time for the PEI Fiber Festival at the end of September? Oh, so your festival you're so sorry. sarcastic. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Well, the festival is three days, so I yeah. can have a sweater for okay. every day. Okay. So I, I think that it's uh, the pattern, uh, even though it looks fairly complex, it looks like you could probably memorize it fairly quickly. So And it's it's amazing how when you don't have to look at your pattern that often. It's much faster. It goes yeah. a lot faster. Yeah. It's it's amazingly fast. So I think I, think I will. 
be able to. And the rest, like the middle part is all stockinette. So that'll be, yeah, that'll well, go we'll quick. see how it goes. Good. Yeah. It's going to be pretty. Yeah. So I have to do my test swatch just to make sure that this yarn weight is going to So you'll have that cast on by next episode. Yeah. Okay. I'm just waiting. Uh, so this, and if you're, if you're really sharp eagle eye, you'll notice that this is Aaron and this is worsted. I'm going to do it in worsted. And, but I just don't have pine forest in worsted. Yeah. That's, I'm going to have that. So that's what I'm going to do. So, and I'm still have my wild and reckless heart, which I got so slow on this. I wanted to actually have my sleeve started because I'm supposed to be working on both at the same time. Mm -hmm. But now I'm a little bit nervous about where I am on this one. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to try to get a sleeve done for next episode too, because I really, really, really actually want that sweater as well. Yeah. Like I'm excited to wear it. So yeah. that's great. All right. So that's it for Whipville. Okay. So, um, <laughs> So then it's a shop update. Okay. So you can handle this. Okay. This is hilarious. Well, it's not hilarious. Is yes, it? <laughs> it's not well, funny. It's funny because we let Ken a man, man name a yarn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. We let Ken name a yarn. Yeah. Um, so we had shorts and ends. Like, we don't waste anything. No. Like, no fiber leaves this mill unless it's literally drenched in poop. <laughs> uh, grease marker that people use during breeding that we can't get yeah. off or you know something like that I mean because you know underneath all of that there's a valuable there's wool we love wool so much yeah. and uh, just so seems like a... we've been saving up some odds and ends of things and there is a, a bit of alpaca and wool mixed in in this mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to say the exact percentage of each to be honest yeah. but it's very soft so, so there's not going to be any wool like there's not going to be a content label. No, on we, this I would have no idea because we have, and there could be angora. Yeah, and there could be mohair. So if you're allergic to anything, yeah, don't purchase yeah. it. Um, but what he decided to call it is Garfield. Garfield is the road we live on, so it's called Garfield Grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> but that is it's actually incredibly soft. Yeah. It's probably one of the softest yarns we've ever made. Yeah, it's really Because nice. there's alpaca and probably bunny in it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. maybe a little bit of mohair too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it's like a brown and white melange. Yeah. Uh, because gonna... it didn't matter. I need the fleeces that we had that were, that were, that we had made yarn out of. So some of the stuff that we saved from the special natural right. collection that we did like more than a year yeah. ago. It's, it it's all, all went in here to the yeah. Starfield Grizzly. Now, this is a very small amount. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to assume it's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. Because it's just the one color. I'm going to do a variegated color, I think. And if yeah. it turns out, you'll be looking at a photo of it right now. If yeah. it didn't, then just ignore the yeah. fact that I just said that because it's just <laughs> the natural color. Yeah. But people have been buying a little bit of natural from us or been asking for more neutral tones mm -hmm. and stuff because, you know, I'm all about the bright stuff and I forget right. to even put white yarn out on the shelf. I'm like, what? Yeah. Not diet? <laughs> Why would I? So I actually made an effort this week to put some white natural yeah. stuff in every type of yarn sort of out for a change. Um, but yeah, I just, you know what? I'm amazed at how soft it is. Mm -hmm. Well, and the spinning is very loose. Uh, loose. Yeah. So I, when I, when we were designing the yarn, Jen had the idea for the, the type of yarn that she wanted. So we spun it with a very, uh, loose twist. Yeah. And we did a two ply with a very loose, uh, yeah. ply so it'll as be well. like super lofty. Yeah. It's going to be very cozy. Yeah. I think, but too. I mean, I guess some people would find, uh, would, will it split? It doesn't well, seem like it will. Yeah. It's, it's loose. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, don't hold us responsible right. if you put your needle through it, right. but it is cohesive. Yeah. And the yarn is very well, but I spent yeah. a lot of time making sure that it was a well-balanced yarn. So. It looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I was excited to just use the stuff cause I get really excited about not wasting stuff. Yeah. And, um, God, the name was funny Yeah, and, uh, it just turned out like spectacular. Yeah, it did. So I don't know. We probably only have a couple dozen of these. If that, if that, yeah. So uh, of course, you know, they're your exclusive viewer Did you shopping them? link. No, thing? I didn't weigh them. Okay. So it should be somewhere around 200 yards for a hundred grams. Well, they're definitely 200 yards because yes. I have measured them. <laughs> yes. But the, the gram, yeah. I think so, be, yeah. so our target was 200 grams to no 200 yards to a hundred grams. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it slightly thicker than our Selkirk worsted, which is 200 yards to 80 right. grams. So it's a thicker, it's a two ply. It's really loosely spun. It's just the coziest 
Yeah, thing. we didn't we didn't know how it was going to turn it out. It would be spectacular for um, hats and mitts. Yes. Yeah. And so this is not a merled because what do you call it? What is this? It's it's a uh, heather. It's yeah, a heather. It's a heather. Heather brown. Yeah. Which you can probably yeah. see. So I wouldn't. Um, Ken has already said, "Oh, I want a pair of socks." No, it's not good for socks. It won't be good for socks because it's spun too loosely. Hats and mitts will be lovely. Yeah, and it's very lofty, so the durability for socks is not. It's not going to be good for socks. No. So, but if for hats and mitts, for hats and mitts, it'll be or beautiful. a scarf, and it's or, a pretty traditional hat and mitt, brown, gray yeah. heather. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's Garfield Grizzly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ken, for the name. Super fluffy and cozy grizzly. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to tie that in, to be honest. <laughs> but since it's only going to be available for a few days, we won't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Is, we might, we might uh, we'll continue to make stuff with leftovers like this, but it won't necessarily be even remotely similar. Like, nope. It's, the next one will be something something different. different with a different name. Yeah. Um, but we do want you to be able to tag it on route early and stuff, so we did give it an official Yes, name Garfield Grizzly. In honor know, of Valentine's it's Day. It's something what, very yeah. <laughs> soft and romantic. A bear. <laughs> it's uh, it's really, uh, and we don't even have bears here. No. But we do have a Garfield Road, which is and where we And we live. certainly do not have grizzly bears. No. <laughs> <laughs> if some black bear wandered over from Nova Scotia on the... <laughs> that would be the closest you would have. That would be the closest we'd yeah. have to a grizzly. No bears on PEI. No. So it's just one of those happy things. We had no idea how it was going to turn out. We just no. did it. Uh, and we were just a bit nervous a... about spending time on anything like that. Yeah. But we definitely it paid off in this case. Yeah. This is a really lovely yarn. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. All so right. So and that's offering. all that we're going to yeah. uh, update in the shop because we've you know we've got all our regular stuff. Yeah. So that's it. So, Nothing new from Coco Knits this week for no. the first time in six months. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> now we have quite, uh, we've got three questions on Ask Us Anything. Okay, great. So we're going to do really quite a sheep breed tutorial because they were, two of the questions were about sheep breeds and the third question was about the fiber festivals. Okay. So we'll handle the sheep breeding thing first. Perfect. So the first one is from Urban, Urban Garden Girl, and she is um, catching up on episodes, and she okay. says she's up to episode 19 right now, and she wants to know, she said, you said something about that there's no merinos on Prince Edward Island because either it's too wet or too cold or both. Why are there no merinos on Prince Edward Island? It's too wet and too cold. It's too wet and too cold. <laughs> and the reason is because she was confused because we also said about marshmallow sheep that their snow doesn't melt doesn't melt on their so they have lots of insulation. Okay. But, but what, so how would it be air. too cold? Yeah. yeah. But, so the issue is is that um, merino sheep have very very dense um, fleeces, and if they get wet down inside. It's not good for the sheep. We were talking mold the wool. and rot. Yeah. Yeah. So there's such a thing as wool rot. Yeah. So, um, and also there is, uh, and I don't know for sure if this is the case, but you're, um, they also, different breeds have different hardiness as far as their feet go mm -hmm. as well. So this, they need to be able to, to have, be a breed where their feet can get wet yes. often. And be wet all the time. Yes. Like our sheep's feet are going to be wet from uh, the 1st of November yeah. until the end of June. And we, you and know, if you, that you can understand like if your own feet were wet yeah. that entire time, no yeah. shoes, what your skin would look like. It's a different adaptation yeah. than being like a southern climate, dry climate sheep. Right. Yeah. Which is more what Merino. Now we were told that we couldn't even have Coradale here yeah. because they're so closely related to Merino mm -hmm. that their feet would not be able to withstand. Um, but we have not had an issue. No. 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 Yeah. So, uh, and because our sheep are outside, you know, and Merino, I mean, any, probably any of the wool breeds that if you're, if you're, um, fleece is so dense and you have and merinos have um, some wrinkling and stuff mm -hmm. like that to even have more skin uh, skin um, surface area right. for wool then you don't want it to get damp right it creates and, folds yeah um which they're now sort of proactively breeding out of the breed yeah um for various health reasons right um, but like they kind of put the wrinkles in now they're taking the wrinkles back out yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they create skin folds and yeah. you know what can happen in skin folds. It can get damp in there and yeah. it cause all kinds of problems. Yeah. 
Um, and the reason it's so dense is of course because the fiber is so fine. Yes. So the staple would all be lay, would be like have very little air underneath it because it's, yeah. it's such a fine, fine thread that's growing out of their body like it's extremely dense yeah and so there's just not a lot of air circulation right and so if you know it gets wet or damp yeah no so we the sheep that do best here like we cory devils also have quite a dense um a dense fleece compared to some other breeds but you uh they do still have air circulating around so you actually need um air circulating around the fleece that if they if they get wet that it dries out fairly mm -hmm. quickly and then and then it's no good to have like a super fine wool if the wool gets ruined, even if the sheep is not affected. Yeah. By the no, so you so won't find any they, merinos. We won't find any merinos here. Yeah, and definitely not any super wash merinos. No. So <laughs> that's not a sheep breed. Yeah, oh, that's right. It's a treatment. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that answers the question, and, and uh, that's to the best of our knowledge. Yeah. Because nobody has merino, so we can't yes, tell if you exactly. We screwed up by all means. Yeah. Let, let, us know. let us know. So then the next next question is from prairie firebird and she wants to talk she heard somewhere that canadian or cotton wool doesn't felt so is that true is what she wants to know so first of all i want to say there were three arcot breeds that were um Created developed by the Animal Research yeah. Center in right. Ottawa. Okay. So the name ARCOT, A-R-C-O-T-T, -T, is actually an acronym right. from the Animal Research, Research Center, Center in Ottawa. In Ottawa. Okay. It's not called that anymore, apparently. Okay. But when the breeds, there were three breeds that were um, created, made like bred, especially for Canadian weather and right. climate conditions and everything. There was the Canadian ARCOT, there was the Rito Arcot, and there was the Udaway Arcot. Not so many Udaway Arcots around anymore. And Udaway is just another way of saying Ottawa. Yes, that's right. right. So... I mean, Udaway is Ottawa. Yes. They were being very clever. Yes. <laughs> it's the <laughs> Ottawa like Arcot, but a different language. language. Okay. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. Canadian and the Rito Arcot are the two breeds that really out of the three that were developed that really have flourished here and i think the canadian arcot is actually has a, a sheep larger sheep population than even the rito arcot oh. but around here rito arcot is the is, is the, the one that we get yeah. and i sometimes say canadian arcot but i'm talking about canadian rito arcot yeah i'm talking about that it's a canadian arcot made breed <laughs> but it's not the canadian arcot, arcot breed it's canadian rito arcot that's what we're using. Like there's the Canadian, the Canadian <laughs> it's in Canada. Country. It's in Canada, right? It's a Canadian breed, but the actual breed of sheep, is Canadian Arcot, right. is different than, than Rito Arcot. So it's very, it's confusing. very clear now. We're so glad we were able to <laughs> clear that up yeah. for you. Yeah. So anyway, so the Canadian, the Rito, and the Udaway are all Canadian breeds. Right. They're all Arcots. Yeah. However. They're very to different. To be clear, yes, they They're all have different. different things in the mix. Different right. ingredients in the recipe. Because what yes. they combined a lot of different sheep breeds to make this Canadian super breed. Right. They developed three of them and then kind of saw what stuck. That's right. Right. That's okay. exactly right. And they actually serve like sort of two different purposes. So the, the Rito Arcot, which is what is common here on PEI as far as Arcot breeds go, is um, usually used for uh, like breeding stock. Actually, it's usually the female ewes that are that are the the sought after sought after, and their that breed originates from forty percent Finnish landrace sheep, which we don't have. I don't know that we have very many of them here. Finns. No, like we pure. bought, we bought Finn stuff at Crosses when we first started. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the reason people like Finn is because they, uh, lamb in litters. Yes. They have, have, a, they have lots, lots of, baby. of babies, but and just so you know, they have good milk production too. So yes. they can feed their babies. Okay. But every sheep has two teats. Yeah. Yeah. Not four. Yeah. Two. <laughs> 
So you're sort of limited. They should have bred, bred them with more teeth. Yeah. Because yeah. cows have one baby and they have four. Yeah. Are these things that non-farm people don't know? I don't Probably. know. Probably. So it's a bit weird to have extra lambs when you only have two teats. But yeah. if your milk production is really, really good and they can keep up with yeah. double time on yeah. each one, yeah. <laughs> then that might be okay. Yeah. Certain sheep can do it. Yeah. That's right. But it's not, they have a litter, but they don't have a litter worth of teats. No, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so Rito Arcot are uh, very prolific. Yeah. And they are made up of a bunch of different things, but the it's uh, the fin. 40% finished land race. And there's actually also a little bit of Corydale, like low in the percentages, and they have 20% Suffolk right. in them. And that doesn't felt. So Suffolk wool does not felt right. easily. To make a very long story yes. short. So Suffolk wool does not, and that's the key to when we talk about, back to the question right. about the Canadian Arcot. The Canadian Arcot was bred from 37% Suffolk. So the percentage of Suffolk is a lot more in the Canadian Arcot. So I have no personal experience with Canadian Arcot wool, but it makes sense that it would be more difficult to felt it because there's more Suffolk, Suffolk. in and the breeding. Suffolk is definitely known for not felting. Right. And Suffolks are the black face sheep that you see everywhere, the most yeah. common sort of black face. The pro sheep. like kind of the archetype. Yeah, and black it's a meat sheep. breed. Yes. So you would never have a... They not that worried we, about the wool. Not that we couldn't spin it, but you would never have a giant flock of suffix for their wool. Right. I mean, it's just not you important. Well, it's used, used for other things, but not yeah. felting. It yeah. I felt. mean, it's still wool. Yeah. But you, they're not a wool breed by any stretch. They're not right. even like a, a like a combined dual purpose no. breed. No. They don't care about the wool quality at all when breeding suffix. They care, care about the animal's shape and yeah. uh, how it puts on protein in another area, which would be in muscle mass, not yeah. in fiber. That's right. So muscle mass and wool are both made up of protein. Right. So the body will decide which one it will put it into, mm -hmm. similar like roots and shoots on a plant. Yeah. Um, and so you would choose a suffolk that didn't put a lot of protein into wool. Yeah. Uh, because they want to put it into muscle mass. Right. The, the, it's got to go away. That's just the way it is. It's Only one so or much the protein. Other. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so the uh, so it makes sense that if somebody says Canadian arcot wool doesn't felt, uh, that would make sense to me. That it wouldn't yeah. felt easily. Right. So the interesting thing is, is that uh, when I looked this up, because I did a little bit of research, the Canadian arcot wool is considered a medium grade wool. And so is the Rito Arcot wool is considered a medium grade wool, but we are, the Rito wool is actually quite fine. We're mm -hmm. finding as far, not Merino fine, but it is, it ha, and we use mostly lamb's wool in our yarn. So it's uh, the first shearing. And so that's, uh, that's also finer. So we're finding that, uh, well, I was a bit surprised that they were graded at kind of the same because Suffolk wool is, tends to be the grade for medium must be fairly wide wide <laughs> suffolk wool we have a couple of sheep in our diva our matriarch right. of our flock is a suffolk the biggest sheep we own yes the she's biggest retired sheep. she's retired and the grandmother of uh you yeah. know a lot yeah. and her wool is a little sketchy not good not good and there's not a lot of it <laughs> no no she doesn't really grow a lot yeah she probably barely needs to be shorn like she just yeah it's always the same. She yeah. always looks the same. <laughs> she always looks the same. Yeah. And she's huge. Yes, she's big. Big uh, boned, that girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's wonderful, though. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, and more than that. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, even then more. and then you've yeah, more. Get us talking about sheep. You're in real trouble. Yeah, so okay. thanks for that question, <laughs> Prairie Firebird. Okay. So then the third question is about the traveling to Prince Edward Island for the Fiber Festival. So the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival, which we're so excited is going to yeah. be happening, yeah, is so happening. A lot of exciting things in the works that we yes. can't quite talk about yet, but right. I would expect exciting announcements coming up the next That's few right. episodes. Yeah. So the Fiber Festival update. So the Fiber Festival is going to take place in Prince Edward Island at the PEI Convention Center, which is in the Delta Hotel, from September 25th to the 26th. Seven. So. Sorry, the 27th. So the 25th is workshops. The 26th until noontime on the 27th is a marketplace and workshops are going on on the Saturday as well. 
there's um, all kinds of activities yeah. planned. Yeah, and the Kaylee is the 25th and the 26th. Yeah, Friday, so Friday and Saturday, Saturday night. night. So there's yeah. it's the same thing two nights in a row because the venue is fairly small. Yeah. So they decided to have um, two Kaylees that so people have a better opportunity. Yeah, so to there go. will only be 200 tickets in total. Right. Probably just under 100 a night. Yeah, for the Kaylee. So if that's, I mean, we're certainly looking forward to it. So yeah. if you haven't gotten on the email list yet, um, the people on the list will be the first people to find out about ticket sales and so on. Right. Um, advance notice of when things are being listed. So mm -hmm. if you really want tickets to the Kaylee, I would suggest joining the email list ASAP. Yeah. Um, they haven't been released yet. No, but nothing's been sold yet. Yeah, yeah. nothing's been sold yet. Um, there is a block of rooms that have been reserved by the organizing committee at the Delta. So there's a, there's a special rate for, for and they're about 50% booked already. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you I need to, it's a little bit confusing on the website because it's, it, you have to put in the dates of the fiber festival. So you, there's a direct link on the fiber festivals website that says already made up your mind. Right. <laughs> and then you click that link and you get sent over to the Delta's uh, booking reservations. And unfortunately the, the date comes up as a week long date. Okay. But you need to put in September 25th to the, and departure the 27th. Okay. And then once you do that, you can access the the PEI Fiber Festival okay. block of rooms. Okay. So if it's really important to you to stay at the venue yep. and you're thinking about coming, it's 50% booked already. Yes. So you might want to get on that. Yeah. And to get. Now, we're hoping to maybe get a larger block later on, but we don't know if we'll be able to. No. Yeah. So right yeah. now it's 50% booked. Yeah. So there are lots of other places to stay. Yes. But some people, like I personally, would really want to stay at the venue. Mm -hmm. I just like being able to roll down there and not have to go outside and yeah. you know do all. It's that pretty thing. a pretty busy weekend downtown. Yeah. As well because there's also the um, the craft beer festival right. is happening. It's the end of. Um, Fall Flavors, which mm -hmm. is a culinary festival that happens for the whole... Or it's not the end anymore, sorry. They extended it into the first week of October, I think. But that's going on on the island. Mm -hmm. And um, People so... People keep saying September is the new July. Yes. Weather-wise as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's a yeah. beautiful time to visit the island. Yeah. So the question, actually, was uh, from... Networking Jen. Right. I thought that was a note for me at first. I no. was like, what am I doing about networking? Yeah. Networking, <laughs> networking Jen. Very clever. Yes. Name. Yeah. So she says, what about getting around without a car? Forget it. If you come... <laughs> Okay, now wait a second. <laughs> so the airport is in Charlottetown. So there, yes. you can take a cab yes. from the airport, downtown Charlottetown. The airport's very close to don't the city. Be, don't be intimidated by the amount of uh, distance it is because... We are talking about PEI, so even though it's what probably fifteen kilometers, it's it's just at the top of the town. Like yeah, it's not it, downtown. It's, it's close. maybe not. It's it's fast. very it's, short cab ride. Yes, a very okay. short cab ride. <laughs> so getting downtown Charlottetown is no problem. Right from, and then she asks about public transit, taxis, and Uber. There's no Uber. Yeah. Just, <laughs> No. We don't have Uber Eats either. Yeah. So there's no Uber. You get peckish, no Uber Eats. And I'm not sure, Networking Jen, if you don't drive or you were just wondering if you could go without a car. Right. But we're all we're suggesting rent a car. If you wanna if you wanna see, see any, any other anything. fiber destinations outside the festival. Now, Charlottetown is very walkable. Yes, very walkable. But we're talking about 10 blocks here yeah in either direction yeah. okay it's a small so, city it's a small city it is a city yeah it's not as you know we often get tourists wandering around with their maps in the middle of the road like they're in uh, at epcot center in the yeah. like no these are real roads like yeah. we actually drive on these yeah. that just gives you an idea of how very, quaint it looks it's a very quaint beautiful <laughs> yeah, city we're like this is a real car yeah. i need to i need to go through there thank yeah. you 
crosswalks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so Not a lot of uh, traffic lights, but lots no, of stop signs. No, and it looks kind of, there's like cobblestone areas and stuff like that. Yeah. So I get it, but it actually is a real city. Yeah. <laughs> People do work there and need to yeah. drive their vehicle down the road. A lot of historic buildings. And yeah, stuff, a lot so of historic cool. buildings. So it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not huge, but it's very walkable. You can yes. certainly find anything you need within walking distance of the Delta pretty well. Yes. That you would find in a normal city. Not yeah. Broadway shows and things, but they no. actually do have quite a good theater. Lots of restaurants. Out. Lots of restaurants. The Confederation Center, we haven't really talked about that, yeah. has a very, like, we really Robust punch above, program. Yeah, yeah, we really punch above our weight as far as live live theater. Musical theater. Musical theater yeah. and live music. Live music. I'm going to concerts all the time. I'm yeah. always talking about it on here. So yeah. there's lots, lots, lots to do within walking distance. Absolutely. Right. But if you want to get out to see, you know, Green Gable alpacas or something like that, you would have to rent a car. Or going to the beaches yeah, or, or going anything to the beach like that. Or anything you would like have that. to. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't really know too much about what this taxi situation is downtown because I've only ever had to take a taxi once from the airport here to where we live, which is not, it was, it's a it's long, far. it's long. 40 yeah. minute drive. Yeah. It's a yeah, 35 minute drive or 30 minute drive of the best of, right. depending on how, who's driving. Right. It's shorter for you mm. than it is for me. I don't drive that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's, you know, we want to be honest about it. It's yeah. not, it's not really, uh, it's not, there's, you can book tours and stuff though too. Yes. And get picked up. Yeah, at central locations, but there's no, no, not like like a lot of regularly running shuttle service like from New York City to the Hamptons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like nothing like that. Yeah, you're not gonna look. We do have a bus system that goes between the um, maritime provinces called Maritime Bus. Yeah, is it still called that? I don't know. Anyway, we'll have to we'll find out more from yeah. the department. Of but basically, tourism. if you're coming with a group and you're renting a house and you want to go do out and about stuff. Yeah. If you're not staying right inside downtown, uh, which you easily could entertain yourself there for quite a few, few days anyway, yeah. certainly for the weekend. You can with eat other, your way through. You can eat your way through. <laughs> lots of seafood. Yeah. Um, then probably having a car for the group yeah. is the best idea. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll find, we'll, we'll ask the... Um, the organizing committee to put some more information maybe uh, About up, when it gets closer closer to the thing. We actually have a, we're going to a meeting with the uh, tourism department tonight actually. So mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll um, talk a little bit about, it. maybe we'll find out more, more things. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out more things there. So that's it. So it's, uh, it's, it's rural. Yeah. They don't and call it out. Canada's garden. Yeah. Before. And it looks tiny. But you're talking still about three or four hours of driving to get across. Like, the, the island looks tiny, island. but you're not yeah. going to walk from one end to the other. Like, it's <laughs> tiny on the map. Yeah. But it's it's not a small island. Tip to tip, it's it's about three hours, yeah, I think. Yeah, so. at least, I would think. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, we sort of had that conversation about walking <laughs> around Lake Ontario. Yeah, and driving going for a picnic. Ontario. Or driving, yeah. <laughs> It looks small on the map, but remember, Canada is one of the largest countries in the world. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> that's right. At was one point, somebody left us off the map. What was that? Oh, like the whole I can't province was. They were like, "What is this? We just leave it off." Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. That little spot. We're, 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 we're joined to New Brunswick or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. big island, as yeah. islands go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and if every I keep touching my shoulder here. Okay, uh, why? But, well, because I was uh, on the blocking thing. You'll see what a great job I did on blocking. But there was a I had like I noticed when oh. I was coming out, I had this little uh, like uh, bump bump on my my shoulder from where I blocked, and I meant to steam it, and I forgot. Oh, okay. So I'm being a little sure self conscious fine. about it, but I'm sure it's fine. All right, is that it? Well, we hope everybody else has a lovely Valentine's Day. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> be doing our thing here on the yeah. farm yeah yeah we don't have to worry about dinner reservations or any of that no. stuff anymore no so <laughs> but i although i probably will have a well ken cooks dinner almost every night anyway so yeah what's to he'll do a charcuterie plate or something yeah something and then fun. invite his sister-in-law so that she can third wheel it <laughs> Right? Is that right? 
Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's about right. We might even, we might even uh, treat ourselves to a glass of wine or something. Right. Who it's knows? so romantic for you too. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. Okay. All right, so I guess that's it. All so right. like and subscribe if you've enjoyed yourself. Yes. During oh our- wait. There's something else. Of oh, course there, there is. There always is. <laughs> so it's a favor. And uh, I, I knew we would forget to put this on this list. What is so it? What, we, what we're asking this time, because we're oh. always asking for something. Oh, we um, made our 4,000 subscriptions. Okay, too. that wasn't it. But oh, yay, yay, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, we're happy that we got over 4,000. That's yeah. wonderful. But what we want to ask now is something to do with our website. So if you've purchased a product from us that oh, you've been okay. happy with, Mm-hmm. We would love for you to have to have you go back to the website and review the product. Give us a positive review on our website because that helps uh, other people feel more confident in buying. Mm-hmm. And we really have almost none. Mm-hmm. Very few because we don't run complex email campaigns to remind you or ask you for reviews yeah. or some of the things that other organizations do. Um, I actually don't even know how to review a product on our own website. How do you do you it? Just go in and click the stars and. Oh, does it have that on it? Yeah. Oh. Write a review? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. Good job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you can go on and go to the product that you've purchased and give us a review. If it's positive. If it's not positive, we'd prefer to hear from you personally. Yes. <laughs> because we would love right. to get that feedback. Yeah. Um, but not publicly posted, preferably. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you feel inspired to do so, that would help us out a lot. And it just mm. helps your... Um, your other fiber loving friends figure out what's safe to buy yeah. or the quality of our products. It was uh, a, it was a big discussion when we started at the online shop that it's not that easy to buy yarn right online. Yeah, like you want to, I mean, you need, definitely need to have like the squish yeah. factor. So if you can help out your right. other fellow shoppers, right, and, and by so giving that. some information. I mean, yeah. we can talk about it all we want, but it's really the people who have purchased it that are the true judges of the quality yeah. of our product. Yeah, um, and uh, I know a lot of. You have bought a number of things. There's no need to feel <laughs> to go yeah. on and review all of them. But yeah. if you um, want to help us out in that way, we'd really, really appreciate mm-hmm. getting some more reviews up because yeah. um, people are nervous to buy yarn online, and I yeah. completely understand why. And that would really help. Yeah. So now that's it. Okay. So now yes. we're actually really saying goodbye. Yeah. We're saying okay. goodbye. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>